everybody, it's Warp Jester, and welcome back to another episode of Warp Jester Does Minecraft. This is episode 5 of the server play series, and uh, you'll notice that I'm uh, not on our server, I'm actually in our test world. And the reason for that is today I actually wanted to show you uh, some of the logistics that I've been working on uh, for Railcraft. And uh, kind of get you a feel for that. And I have not been doing this uh, by myself, this has actually been a joint effort between me and... Uh, a really cool chap I want to do you guys too. Ah, creeper! Oh, hey, oh, uh, hey, Yankee. <laughs> What's up, Warp? How's it going, buddy? Oh, pretty good. Awesome, awesome. I was actually just gonna show the peeps around, show them all the uh, hilarity and craziness we've done on uh, Railcraft. Oh, good lord! All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time. All right, let's do this. All so, right. as, uh, as we talked about before, guys, we got our little to-do list of stuff to get done, and uh, one of the things was a logistics system. Again, I, I've said this once, but I'll keep reiterating this for anybody new. We do not have teleportation on our server, so uh, rail, rail line logistics is a very, very important, very fundamental thing to have. Um, with this system, we are going to be able to move items hither and yon, so to speak, in terms of uh, getting items from different cities to each other, since some cities are going to be specialized in what they give. So, to start off with, um, I was going to say, if you see any kind of rough around the edges, uh, <laughs> redstone work or anything like that, uh, forgive us. This is this world is actually what me and Yankee have used from the very beginning, just to get a feel for how things work. We really had never had a chance to play with real craft before, so this really is honest to God. Just we started from the very basics and tried to figure out what the hell is this box do? What is this box do? What is this box do? <laughs> so to start you off here, first things first. This is going to be uh, this was a test of rail line management and rail yard management. So you'll see here we've got a whole bunch of controller lights and controller boxes. I'm not going to go into any real depth and detail on these right now. Uh, I might do a how-to on them later, but for now, just understand that the way these systems are set up is between different points, in this case, from that light down there to this light here, they're basically just checking this track. If there's any trains on this track, they'll change signal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my goggles on here real quick, and you're going to be able to see the linking between these lights and these control boxes, so there's one with a little red, red uh, dust flowing everywhere. So these can actually monitor and see where trains are and then make sure they don't uh, basically run into each other. So you'll see we've got a train coming up here. This guy's going to have to stop here because this track is still occupied by that train up there. Ta-da! As soon as he clears, then he can take off again. So that's the rail line manual. This is basically what's going to be used all along the rail lines coming to and fro different uh, uh, cities. you also notice here we've got a bypass line. This is actually where... You have two lines running in parallel. You'll notice faster trains, for example, if there's already a slower train on the line in front of them, they'll hit a bypass line that will stop the slow train, allowing the fast train to bypass before taking off again. So that's the basic rail line management. Then over here, this was a test we set up to try to create basically rail yard management. This, The idea of this is when you have, for example, a whole bunch of trains coming into one station or one yard, uh, this will allow the, the trains to be queued up in sequence. We've actually got four lines here, lines one, two, three, and four on the inside, and it'll allow the trains to get all queued up inside of here in order. And then additionally, I've got a bypass line. This bypass line is only here because if there's any trains that happen to come in that are longer than these guys can handle, these guys can handle about a 10 train, a 10 cart long train. So if there's anything bigger than that, it'll actually take this bypass line and I'll allow it to go through first and get processed. Um, pretty straightforward in that sense. However, when it comes to logistics of putting everybody in order and making sure that they all take off in order, meaning if you get there first, you get to go first, and you don't get left behind or kind of stalled up because people keep basically skipping in line. You'll see all the red, <laughs> the red flowing dust here of all the order here. I'm sure is probably a more efficient way to do this. Again, this is just us learning how to use these control boxes and linking. So, it looks, <laughs> it looks pretty, pretty frightening here. <laughs> so this is, <laughs> this is the real management in the real yard. Now, once trains get through this queuing system, they're then going to move into the process of being basically put into the, the sorting system and whatnot for fulfillment. The idea behind our system is 
each individual town being a specialized town, a forestry town, a bee town, a magic town, etc., are going to be able to receive trains from other towns that need the supplies that these towns can create, and these towns are going to fulfill them. In order to do this, however, we need to be able to break apart trains, identify what the needs are, whether it's a particular item out of a chest cart or, say, a battery box needs to be charged or tanks need to be refilled, etc. And to do that, Yankee has got a great little system over here for uncoupling. Yeah, this one was a lot of fun. This actually start, started with uh, uh, something Warp was working on, and uh, I decided to take it a, one step further. Uh, basically, the train comes in. It's these decouplers, and uh, I've actually added in two of them just to make sure that uh, the, the carts do get decoupled. Um, it'll hit this area here, and uh, as you can see, I've got a, a timer on here. Every time it pulses, it sends one through. Um, now, these, these, little, these little guys uh, in between the coupler tracks, these little tiny arrow ones, what are those tracks called? Uh, they're control tracks, I believe. And these are just like mini power tracks, right? Right. They just push push the cart or, or locomotive if it's in idle mode right on through. Now, one thing, I, one thing I do want to point out with these guys is a unique value to them is they actually uh, yes. are redstone switchable. So you can actually make them go backwards or forwards. And they, they are interconnected. So if you have three in a row and you put down a redstone torch, it'll switch all three. Very nice. Pretty cool. So, basically the carts come in here. Once this timer ticks, it'll send them on through. Um, if it's a locomotive, this block here detects. I, I didn't put in any colors. We're just using basic gray locomotives right now. But you can uh, use dyes and dye these for uh, however you want it set up. But uh, if it's a locomotive, it'll get sent down that track to get refueled and have water added, all that kind of good stuff. And then sit there and wait for the the trains to be ready, and then it'll send it on down to get processed. So, you want to go take a look at your uh, your processing? Yeah. So once the carts get uh, decoupled along here, now they're individual carts and longer links. So they're going to take off down there, and effectively at that point, what that's going to happen is all the carts are going to get sorted. Now in this particular sorted. case. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, soldiers, filtered, whatever the case may be. At this point, this is where you'd have this kind of system. This is just a mock-up and a test. Basically, the idea is you'd have every single type of conceivable uh, detector down here as a, in, a, in a kind of a test for environment, if you will. And they're simply going to have the cards go by, figure out what they are, and they're going to sort them down in different columns. So you'd have a column for all of the chest cards, all of the tank cards, all of the energy cards, all of the animals, etc. However, however much you want to break them down, it, it just really depends on what each city is doing and what they need to check for. Once this is done, and they've run down the different individual lines, you can then process the requests. Now, how we relay information back and forth is critical. And the way we're going to end up doing that is a simple process of saying, if I need oak logs, I'm going to send a chest cart to Yankee's forestry town with a single oak log in that cart. And then, Yankee? <laughs> um, I actually wrote a turtle program for this, which uh, I'll give it to Warp, and if he wants to put it in his description and uh, you guys will have access to it. Otherwise, it'll be in my video once I get it up and running. Um, I I'll will probably have... put it on Pastebin. Yeah, it is on Pastebin already. Um, we'll make sure we give you the link to it. Uh, I'm going to kind of, kind of do a highlight on it a little later in a different video. But uh, So basically, these different slots are set to different colors. And uh, I'm not going to go through what colors they are. You can look at the code if you want to figure that one out or watch the highlight. Um, basically, it'll get offloaded by this box here. This cart comes in, gets offloaded, goes into the chest, turtle sucks it up, compares it to its uh, items. Um, if it's got the item in its inventory, it'll flash the uh, specific color for that. And these are set these uh, export buses are set to once per pulse, 
and move stacks of items at a time. So this one's got bricks in it. So if I put one brick in that cart, it's gonna put one stack in this chest. And as it goes through, it's going to load it, detect that it's got bricks in it, and then send it on down that way up here. So to make sure I understand things, you're going to have the cart that I sent you with my, you know, bricks in there. I said, I need more bricks. It's going to come across here, and it's going to get emptied of the brick I basically sent. The turtle's going to see what type of item it is. It's going to pulse. And basically, in this case, brick would be like, for example, black. So it pulses the system, put a stack of brick into this chest. It would then send this cart around and then fill that cart back up with a full stack of bricks. Right. So what I'm going to do is I put one brick in here, in this chest cart, and I'm going to send it to you. It's going to stop there, get loaded with its stack, and go up top. So you come up right. here and double check it, and it should have one stack in it. Okay. So for each individual cart, you can put in whatever you want. It'll give you one stack per one item. So if I need 16 stacks, I'd give you 16 brick. Right. All right. So once we've gone through all that process, and again, this is just for the item carts. We still need to flesh out things like tanks uh, and whatnot. But once this is done, all the carts will be sent down this line here. And at this point, the carts are going to be then sent back into the train uh, recoupling system. So that we're going to come all the way back over here. <laughs> Yay! All right. So it comes from its sorting system, where it gets or uh, it, its loading system. So basically, this would this would be a, a mock-up of what that might entail. Um, gets sent down the line. They come in here, and they're sent down, and they all get coupled back together. And my graphics are tweaking out. Give me one second. Okay. So let me go ahead and flip the switch here. Warped. If you want to watch the train. I'm watching. All right. As the timer ticks, it sends down the carts. They go ahead, and I've got these uh, train detectors here. And basically, if the train is not long enough, it will hold that that locomotive in place until the next cart cart hits. Once those are coupled it becomes a one stage longer train and lets it go forward one. And then once the locomotive gets to this point, this train detector here stops the carts from coming down and goes ahead and sends another locomotive to link to the back and then sends out the entire train. So this system right here, you've designed it specifically so that it basically parks a locomotive here, which for the first cart says, okay, this is now a two a two long train. Move it forward to this one. This one says, "Okay, I'm waiting for a three long." Once the next cart comes down, it links up because okay, now you've got three, four, and so on. Right. Now the reason the reason you did this type of kind of uh, system was for what? Uh, I kind of staggered these a little bit because the carts don't exactly sit right on the line where you would expect them to. Mm. So you kind of had to finagle it a little bit. Once it gets past, you know, about five or six carts, it straightens out and works fine. So yeah, so um, unfortunately, rail carts don't exactly line up block for block when they're linked together. They're actually kind of a a block and change, if you will. Right. Uh, and, and plus, when they're getting pushed forward, they kind of smash together too. So yeah. And the reason, guys, we Yankee has this whole elongate system set up to move the carts forward very slowly is simply because if we just try to run the train across these tracks, across these, these little couplers here with a whole bunch of carts, it doesn't always link just right. So you have to right. set it up so it, it'll stall at every single step of the way so it has time to actually link the next cart in place. Yeah, originally I didn't have all this set up like this. I just had uh, tracks and uh, we just let the carts go. Um, as soon as the locomotive was in place, it would just dump out all the carts. And they didn't always connect properly, so uh, it's kind of a, a, a little bit nicer setup. Um, just one cart at a time. 
Um, you can adjust the timer so it's a little bit faster, but I like to make sure it's you know fully coupled and is going to work properly before I send it out. So. So this has been pretty much the most reliable means that you've managed to come across. Yeah. And okay. How long have we had it running? And. <laughs> oh yeah, it seems kind of just run honestly. So again, guys, yeah, ignore the uh, Redstone, if you will. There is obviously more efficient and managed. We can probably compact it into using RedNet or even using uh, computer logic. Again, this is just a quick down and dirty for us to get familiar with the system and try to work out the details. There is a lot of other little bits and pieces along here you'll see. For example, uh, these rather quirk systems. I'm not even going to try to explain them. <laughs> these were multiple attempts for us to try to figure out how to do order requests and order fulfillment. The end goal of this process, again, is since we do not have teleportation, we're going to try to create a system that is at least semi-automated, if not fully automated, so that one city's uh, storage system, be it AE or whatever people choose to use, will be able to detect that it's low on an item and then be able to, on its own, make a request, send out a train to the right location, and then get the information or get the information relayed to that location via dumping an item in a cart, wherever the case may be, get that supply and get it back. It's a very long process. It is a very difficult process. It's a good challenge. This is why we do this. We like to have this kind of a challenge that we look for. So <laughs> that's what we shoot for. Um, there is a lot of other things down here. This, again, this is our little test world. We haven't been doing primarily railcraft here. However, there is a lot of other uh, stuff we have over here. I might take you on a, a tour sometime. There's my little Christmas tree. Uh, I'm going to take you on a tour sometime and show you the rest of the stuff here. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. <clears throat> As always, we certainly do appreciate uh, you sitting down with us and uh, checking out what we've got. Um, always love to get comments and questions. Please feel free to leave comments down below. Um, I will be happy to respond to you, answer questions I possibly can. And likewise, we'd love to get uh, input. If you know of a better way to do something or have some input on how to make something a little more efficient, a little more compact, a little more reliable, if you've got experience with Railcraft any real real amount, we'd love to hear from you. you know, we're still very young and new to this in that sense, and we'd love to learn a little more. So please feel free to uh, let us know. And of course, as always, we appreciate the support, and leaving us a like really helps us out. It promotes our channel, gets us more people so we can actually get more more input and learn more, which is always a wonderful thing. So please feel free to smash that like button. Um, and of course, if you like what you see here and enjoy the uh, series, both in the how-tos as well as the uh, uh, server play series, I certainly recommend you hit the subscribe button. I do try to put out uh, episodes at least once a week, if not uh, twice a week. Uh, likewise, uh, Yankee here has started up uh, his own LP series and made a little bit of uh, server play as well. Uh, tell us a little about it, man. Um, <laughs> well, it's uh, it's definitely a journey. Um, I've never really recorded videos before, so um, hopefully they're not too awful. Not too awful. Where can they find you at on the webs? Um. Ooh, uh, what is my YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Yankee actually um, is a little more traditional. He's actually got his uh, real channel he's using for uh, uh, YouTube recording. He's got a little bit of right. uh, gaming as well as some uh, other stuff on there. And that's going to be uh, YouTube.com slash Matthew Vader. There you go. So, we'll go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and put a uh, link to that in the bottom if you like. I certainly um, will. And I will definitely link people back to you so wow that's always appreciated so like i said guys definitely check us both out uh go ahead over to my he's a uh uh accomplished uh railcraft aficionado now he also does some uh, music on his <laughs> channel and i definitely recommend you check that stuff out it's great um and likewise as always i said uh likes help uh subscription you know subscribe if you like um uh, also, uh, as I said, he is starting his own LP. It is a single-player LP. However, he is using the Bottle Rocket uh, M80 mod pack, the mod pack that we're using for the server play. So you can see a lot of the cool stuff. If you kind of got into joining me for the server play a little bit late, even only a few episodes in, and you really want to see what it's like to start off the, in this world from nothing, uh, you'll love the antics uh, <laughs> Yankee uh, gets to deal with. <laughs> Um, so it's a great, it, it was a very fun episode. This first episode was, was a real ride to, to watch. So I definitely recommend it. Um, 
And of course, like I said, as we get more uh, server plays up and running, I'm sure Yankee will be back with me as we start building out the system in our actual server. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, Ruark has decided to uh, move out to a remote location and start his own city. He has elected to do uh, ore and uh, rock processing for a city, so we're going to work with him on getting logistics worked out, get a rail line taken out to his town, and start getting this kind of stuff in place. So that's all the news for now. As always, if you'd like to say hi to us, of course, as I said, you can do comments down below, but you can also send us a message or say hi at BottleRocketGaming.com. We do try to frequent the forums and uh, communicate that way. Uh, also, as I as I said before, this is a whitelist server, and this is geared towards other uh, YouTube and new media entities. If you are into making videos and into making videos about gaming, please feel free to uh, let us know. We'd love to have you on with us. Uh, we do have our uh, Minecraft server play series here. However, we are a multi-game uh, clan. We are geared towards uh, uh, World of Tanks slash World of Planes and other games, uh, so please feel free to uh, check us out there. In any case, there's Bunny. <laughs> I'm Warp Jester. That's Yankee. Thank you so much, and uh, well, we'll catch you later. Take it easy. From, from Bottle Rocket Gaming. This has been a lot of fun. See you guys later. <laughs>